Not every wedding ceremony is the same. Whether you're planning a ceremony in a religious establishment or opting for a simple celebration, the needs of each couple are paramount. You may be at the point of planning your wedding where you need to select an officiant or meet with a minister. What do you need to know? What questions do you need to ask? Do you need to have a pre-marriage counseling or classes? How is a life celebrant different from other officiants? Hi, I'm Teresa Kriske from TLC Ceremonies, an ordained interfaith and interspiritual minister and a wedding officiant life celebrant. I can integrate the rituals of different faith traditions for a beautiful, unique, and memorable ceremony, no matter what gender, religion, or spiritual affiliation. By the end of this edition, you'll gain valuable insights to help you create a truly meaningful and unforgettable wedding ceremony experience. So let's embark on the journey of love, unity, and celebration. Listen now and discover Wedding Insider secrets for a stress-free, fun, and memorable day. Our podcast helps engaged couples navigate wedding planning complexities while addressing family expectations. Get concise tips on budgeting, wedding party management, ceremony reception planning, and more. Perfect for anyone planning a wedding all in 30 minutes or less. Trust us. You don't want to miss this. Welcome to Stress-Free Wedding Planning, the podcast that will transform your wedding planning journey from chaotic to enchanting. Sal and Sam bring over 80 years of combined wedding expertise and exclusive insider information to the table. If you're recently engaged, feeling the pressure of wedding planning, struggling with family expectations, but still dreaming of a joy-filled wedding, you've come to the right place. Get ready to unveil the best-kept wedding secrets, discover practical tips and strategies, and learn life-changing lessons for a stress-free wedding. Your unforgettable wedding day awaits. We're here to take you on a transformative journey of love, laughter, and memories. So don't miss out on the podcast that just might change your life. This is the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. Hi, I'm Sal of After Hours Events in New England. I've performed at thousands of weddings in my 40 years as a professional MC DJ. Weddings are my passion. Hi, I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions. With decades of DJ experience dating back to the mid-70s, I've rocked the airwaves, pumped up nightclubs, and made thousands of weddings unforgettable. This is the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam. Learn more about our experience and journey to help you with stress-free wedding planning in the trailer or pilot of this podcast. And today's edition, Exploring the Unique Voices of Wedding Ceremonies with Teresa Kriske, is brought to you in part by Clear Vision Productions and Wedding Styles of Connecticut Wedding Show. That's WeddingStylesOfCT.com. But first, if you have a question or concern, go now to Facebook and join us on the stress-free wedding planning community and ask away. Today, we'll explore the art of crafting unforgettable ceremonies that honor diverse traditions and spiritual affiliations. Please welcome Teresa Kriske. Hi, Teresa. How are you? I'm well, thank you. It's wonderful to have you here and a great pleasure to have you explain what you do. Well, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. Well, then we'll just dive straight in then. What is a life celebrant and how does it differ from other officiants? So officiants are officially able to officiate a wedding because it's legal. It has to be officiated. There is a legal document that you have to sign off on. So the, a life celebrant celebrates other things besides weddings. So an officiant, like a justice of the peace or other officiants, probably only do weddings as well as other justice of the peace jobs. Other wedding officiants might only do weddings. I also do other life cycle events like baby blessings and house blessings and vow renewals, although some wedding officiants probably do vow renewals. So there's other life cycle things that happen that a life celebrant will celebrate and create ritual around. Okay, so I guess I have to ask you then, how do you bring that life cycle theme into the wedding ceremony? Is there something that you do that is different than an officiant would do? Do you bring up other rituals or stuff like that? What makes it that much different? I'm not sure it makes that specific thing makes a wedding different, but I do have lots of different rituals that I bring. And also that I'm an interfaith minister. So that means that I can incorporate other faith traditions coming from that background of knowing what the faith traditions are and what they want to bring in together. So if you have a, a Hindu um, bride and a Catholic groom, and they want to bring in traditions from both of those backgrounds, we can easily do that. The benefit of having being a life cycle celebrant is somebody, after they get married, they may want to go into a new home, and so they already know me and know my work. That's the only 
thing that makes me different from other officiants. Okay. Teresa, thank you so much for that. Now, how many hours does it take to prepare for a ceremony itself? So we're talking about a wedding ceremony, of course. How much time does it usually take for you to prepare for that? It could be anywhere from 10 to 20 hours, depending on what they want in the wedding ceremony, depending on how many rituals they want, depending on how many readings they want, and then all the research that goes behind all of that, sending them the couple, some readings that don't involve God, the word God, or aren't in spiritual. They're just talking about love. And then they have to feed that back to me and I incorporate it. And we keep going back and forth until they have the ceremony that they're looking for. Well, that's interesting. I really never kind of looked at it that way before. Do you require any pre-marriage counseling or classes or is this totally secular? No, I don't require any kind of counseling. It's secular in that regard, but it doesn't matter if they want spirituality incorporated or if they just want it related to love. I can do either one, but in the signing of the actual license, I have to sign it as a minister. Very good. So something everyone's going to want to know, Teresa, is what's the cost? What's the charge for your services and what does it cover? So the charges range from $350 to $850 or $1,000, again, depending on what it is that they're looking for. So a $350 wedding is usually what they call an elopement. To get married legally, you only need two things. You need that line that says where the couple says, I do or I will, which means that they are there of their own accord and they want to be there. And then when we say, I officially pronounce you husband and wife, those are literally the two things. And so you can get an elopement package that includes that and a little bit more. That's going to be $350 all the way to, you know, you go through traditional weddings, which has different ceremonies or the love story customized wedding ceremony, which would be $850 to $1,000. Because usually when they want the love story, that involves a questionnaire with the couple filling out the questionnaire, giving it to me. I create a love story. But it's also going to probably have ritual in it, and it's also probably going to have some readings in it, so it's much more involved. That seems like a lot of work involved when you do the love story. I've heard some officiants do that before, and it is absolutely beautiful, but I didn't realize it took that much work to get it done. So it does cover a lot that you have to do beforehand. Yes, yes. So then I know you're in Connecticut, but is there any geographic limitations? I mean, if somebody wanted you to do uh, officiate their wedding in Bali, you'd probably have no problems doing that, would you? Well, I don't know legally if I could do that. You know, it, <laughs> it really, it's really, what I have done, I have to be honest with you, I've written a ceremony. The couple actually got married here and I've written the ceremony and they took it to Italy and they had somebody in Italy actually read the ceremony. I didn't go to Italy, but it was my ceremony and I did marry them here. I did the elopement here and then they took the ceremony with them. But I've gone to other states, you know, I'm okay with going to Massachusetts, Rhode Island, but I've never gone out of the country. And I'd have to look into it. Actually, when I was in school, they suggested not doing that because there's so many legal things that you have to jump through, you know, legal loopholes. Yeah, I was going to ask, I mean, you're obviously able to officiate in Connecticut, but would you then have to get a, a license in every state in order to go to every state? You have to look into the state. So far, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, and even New York, I could marry people. Now, New York City, I'd have to get a special certification, which I'm not willing to do. So I don't marry anybody in New York right. City. Absolutely. That is correct. I know that myself, being a wedding official, that New York is its own beast. Uh, yes. Let them have their thing. Stay away from it. It's much better that way. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your experience. How long have you been doing this? Well, it was a calling. I have my own business, and I've been doing it for 30 years. And then I was having these physical reactions, like my whole body was shaking. And I was like, what's going on? And I was going to the doctors, and they were like, there's nothing wrong with you. And my naturopath said to me, why don't you journal and find out what's why this is happening? And I did. And what came through was be the minister you came here to be. And I questioned that. And then when I finally said, well, maybe I need to look into being a minister. And once I did, all the physical sensations stopped. I started school to be a seminary. I went to seminary. And um, when I left seminary, I was like, okay, there's lots of avenues I could go down. And I looked into doing the chaplain at a hospital and I, I'm not cut out for that. I'm not cut out for the ER. And I looked into 
just being a minister at a church and I didn't want a full-time job. So anyway, it kind of fell into my lap. A friend called and asked if I would marry them and I said yes and I loved it. So I just started doing it. That's fascinating. Thank you for uh, explaining that. It's a very fascinating story. Now, let's have your social media, Teresa. Tell us how they get a hold of you. My Instagram page is at Teresa Kriski, T-H-E-R-E-S-A-C-R-I-S-C-I. That's also my Facebook page, Teresa Kriski. And my website is tlcceremonies.com. That's www.tlcceremonies.com. L-C-C-E-R-E-M-O-N-I-E-S dot com, just so that everybody is very clear on how to get uh, to you there. Yes. Coming up next, Teresa will explain some of the rituals and explain some of the interfaith ceremonies and much more. This is the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast with Sal and Sam, a podcast for engaged couples concerned about wedding planning and family expectations, but who want to have a stress-free, fun, and unforgettable wedding. Wedding Tip Wednesday is brought to you by Emerge Cosmetics. Are you ready to emerge? Our line of lipsticks, lip glosses, and mascaras was created to empower and become who you truly are. Strong, beautiful, and confident. Use the coupon code SF1 at EmergeCosmetics.com for an instant 10% off. That's coupon code SF1 at EmergeCosmetics.com. Emerge is the true you. And on today's Wedding Tip Wednesday, heel covers. This may be the greatest invention since the wheel. Those little things really do work. They're little plastic or ceramic covers that go over a lady's heel on their shoes. It is a great invention, and you should use it especially for outdoor ceremonies or if you're having an outdoor wedding altogether. So that way you don't go tripping in the grass when you put that heel down and everybody sees everything that they shouldn't see. So heel covers, great invention. You know, there's nothing like you're standing there, especially for pictures, and all of a sudden, the bride is getting shorter. She's leaning back all of a sudden because she's going into the grass. Great invention. Highly recommended. And that's another tip from Sal and Sam. Wedding Tip Wednesday is available on the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group page every Wednesday. Join the group for free. Does your current marketing program leave you feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, and confused? Are you getting the results you want or need out of your current marketing strategy? Do you need help but don't know where to turn? TheClearVisionAgency.com. Let the wedding marketing strategists at The Clear Vision Agency launch your brand to success and take that dreaded feeling of working on your marketing away. TheClearVisionAgency.com. Whether you need a few minor changes or a whole new plan, we can create a clear vision and show you the way. Take the first step and request a free digital audit. Just go to our website, TheClearVisionAgency.com. Do you want access to a stress-free wedding planning process? Then go to our website, allthews.atmosphere-productions.com, and get my free report, Eight Questions You Must Ask a Wedding Professional Before Booking Them. Get it today. That's allthews.atmosphere-productions.com. Look for the free report and learn to shop like a pro from a pro and go from concern and worry to stress-free wedding planning. Getting married? Need an officiant? All officiants are not the same. Hi, I'm Teresa Kriske from TLC Ceremonies, an ordained interfaith and interspiritual minister and a wedding officiant life celebrant. I'll integrate the rituals of different faith traditions for a beautiful, unique, memorable ceremony, no matter what gender, religion, or spiritual affiliation. Visit my website, tlcceremonies.com. That's tlcceremonies.com. And now back to the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast. Welcome back to Exploring the Unique Voices of Wedding Ceremonies with Teresa Kriske. Hi, I'm Sam from Atmosphere Productions, wedding entertainment with expert knowledge and the difference in quality. Visit us at atmosphere-productions.com. Hi, I'm Sal from After Hours Events, New England, the leader in making your wedding stress-free. Visit us at afterhoursevents.ne.com. Hi, I'm Teresa Kriske from TLC Ceremonies, an ordained interfaith and interspiritual minister and a wedding officiant life celebrant. Visit my website, tlcceremonies.com. That's tlcceremonies.com. We've already discussed what Teresa does as an efficient and light celebrant. Now, let's talk briefly about some of the ceremonial rituals that you can do during a ceremony, like a unity candle and a sand ceremony. So, Teresa, how about the ritual of jumping a broom? That's something that's happened at weddings. Do you do that? 
I can if they would like me to incorporate that. Absolutely. Briefly explain what that is. The point of jumping over the broom is you're sweeping your past behind you and you're starting new. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty very, concise. Very well put. <laughs> <laughs> so explain to us what a unity candle is for those listeners that have never seen that before. So people do the unity candle a little bit differently, but the essence of the unity candle is you have two individuals, which are the two stick candles that start out. And sometimes the mothers come up and light those candles, indicating that each of their child represents the candle. The bride and the groom represent the candle. And then the bride and the groom come up and take each of those candles and light the unity candle, which is symbolic of the unity of the two families coming together. So there's a thing called the sand ceremony. What does that stand for? That's also very symbolic. And a lot of times that's used with other members of the family, you know, like there's children involved, but it's usually with different colored sands. And as they take sand from different bottles and put it in the one bottle in the middle, and it's symbolic of the lives will never be separated again. Just like you can't go in and separate those grains of sand. So these lives will never be separate again. They're going to be together. I've seen that many times. A very good explanation. And since we're on the subject of sand ceremony, let's explain what the hand ceremony is. Is this where the joining of the hands? Have you ever done that one before? The hand fasting, yes. Yes, that's what it's called. Yes, the hand fasting, there's a couple of different ribbons that are involved, and each ribbon usually has a different color, symbolic of the man and the woman, or the two women, or the two men, either way. They hold their hands, and then you wrap the ribbons around the hand, and they eventually pull their hands out, and it creates a knot. So that, again, once again, they are tied together forever. That's a very good explanation of that. They officially tie the knot, Sam. They officially yeah, exactly. In front of everyone. <laughs> yeah. And there's actually another one called tying the knot, which is based on a the sailor's knot. Have you ever seen a sailor's knot on a sailboat? Yeah. And yes. symbolism of that is as the winds and the waters get rough, the knot gets tighter and tighter. So the couple will tie this knot, symbolizing that if their marriage goes on and goes through tough times, their marriage is going to get tighter and tighter. Interesting. I have never heard or seen that one before. How about you, Sal? I've actually performed that one, yes. Oh, you have? There's a lot of things out there. There's the rose ceremony. There's so many ceremonies, Sam. It's uh, We'd be here uh, for a whole of the podcast just talking about you <laughs> individually. <laughs> well, is there any other ritual or ceremonial item that you want to mention before we move on to another topic? Even like the ring exchange, that's a ritual that yeah. we incorporate. Okay. That doesn't isn't required in a wedding to, for it to be legally binding. Another thing that people do sometimes is the ring warming where they pass the rings around to the people, maybe it's just the family or to everybody in the wedding, Yep, symbolizing that the metal will hold the energy of everybody who's blessing it. So now that the bride and groom will have rings on that have been blessed by everybody in the family. Wonderful. Now, are there any times when you have to work with another officiant? If there's a language difference, you know, you have one officiant speak English and the other one speak another. Uh, are there any other circumstances where another officiant would be used? Yes. I've actually done a wedding where uh, it was an Episcopal priest and myself. And it was just because the gentleman was from the Episcopalian church and the woman was from Unity Church and they both wanted their tradition represented. So we incorporated, we worked together to have both of us as part of the ceremony. Very beautiful. Excellent. Very beautiful. Teresa, once you've drafted a ceremony, are you going through it with the client step by step? Once I draft a ceremony, I send it to them and say, what do you think? Do you like it? What do you like? What do you not like? Do we need to take anything out? And we go back and forth, usually only once. But just to make sure that it's exactly the way they want it. And then what I also do is I get together with them before the wedding and I read it as if it was the wedding day so that they have a sense of what it's going to feel like. Many, many couples really like that. Definitely. So no, I appreciate that you go through the steps that you do because there's way too many efficients there that only change the name on the script. And and that's what they do at every single wedding. This is tailoring it, personalizing it, and making it special for that individual couple. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. I mean, I get so close to these people. I feel like we're friends by the end of the ceremony. Oh, without a doubt. That's a beautiful thing. So, Teresa, you you would then obviously recommend that anyone looking for an officiant not just go with a regular run-of-the-mill officiant, somebody that that is a lifestyle like you will give them much more options. Is that true? 
I would recommend that they look around. The way they look around for their venue or their flowers or whatever, look around and, and interview people because you're going to find people that you resonate more with, that you really would like to work with rather than just settling. Another thing I would recommend is if you're going to have a, a member of your family marry you because they've been ordained through email, which is fine, I would recommend that they hire an officiant just to coach that person for a few things that make the difference in a wedding ceremony. Now, I guess I have to ask the question that probably everybody's asking. What happens if you can't make it to the ceremony? What happens? We, I would get on the phone or I'd have somebody get on the phone with my list of officiants that I know in Connecticut and see who's available and get them the ceremony so that they could show up at the ceremony with the ceremony that the couple was counting on and be able to read it. So it was, it's just from a network of people that I've created and many of us have created in case something like that happens. Perfect. So you have That's a backup plan. Yes. How soon should somebody think about hiring their officiant, Teresa? For me, I tell them that we're going to get started working on their ceremony three to four months ahead of time. So they should know who their officiant is three to four months ahead of time to give them the time to create the ceremony of their dreams. Absolutely agree with what you're saying, Teresa, but also earlier is always better because just like anything at your wedding, your favorite photographer, your favorite DJ, you want to find the efficient that works best with you and early planning is always the best. You know, look for them sooner than later because wedding efficients book up too and you know, you don't want to lose out on the person that you want. Absolutely. Now, before we get your social media and stuff, Teresa, I guess I have to ask you, do you step out of the way when the couple are about to kiss so that you don't photobomb that first kiss? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's one of the things I would tell somebody who's a family member or friend, get out of the way of that picture. What, no jumping jacks behind there to try to get everybody? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> no. That's awesome. <laughs> So yeah, I agree. That's that's something that does need to be coached. I know I coach that all the time. You know, please get out of the way so that they get that perfect picture of just our lovely couple kissing. So finally, Teresa, let's get those socials one more time. So my Instagram is at Teresa Krisky, T-H-E-R-E-S-A-C-R-I-S-C-I. My Facebook is Teresa Krisky. And my website is www.tlcceremonies.com. Thank you very much for joining us here today. We really do appreciate you telling us a little bit about your interfaith and interspiritual ministry and you being a wedding officiant and life celebrant. Thank you for coming over and we hope to speak to you another time. Thank you for having me. It was great fun. Awesome, Teresa. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Have a blessed day. So there you have it. We just shared with you insider tips from Teresa Kriske from TLC Ceremonies an ordained interfaith and interspiritual minister, and a wedding officiant life celebrant. She explained the differences between a life celebrant and other officiants. You learned what questions to ask, and we gave you the tools you needed to help create a truly meaningful and unforgettable wedding ceremony experience. Now, as you spend the next week planning your wedding, if you want me, Sam, or our community of stress-free, engaged couples and wedding experts to answer any wedding-related questions, Join us over in the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Facebook group. Once you're in, go ahead and share your concerns and worries, and we'll let you know if you're on the right track or if there's something we need to work on. The link to join us is in the show notes of this edition. Or go to Facebook and search for the Stress-Free Wedding Planning Community. A new edition is released every Wednesday. Subscribe and get it first. Remember to do something nice for someone today. And if you can't, do something nice for yourself. We'll catch you then. Ciao. Thank you for listening to this edition. If you've enjoyed what you've just heard, leave a review and share it with a friend or someone who would benefit from this information. Until next time, it's TTFN. Ta-ta for now. The Stress-Free Wedding Planning Podcast is produced and copyrighted by Atmosphere Productions in association with After Hours Events of New England. Sponsored in part by Clear Vision Productions and the Wedding Styles of Connecticut Wedding Show Series.